Hey everybody, welcome to Tactical. I've been debating internally about what my next episode should be about. The response to Shitbox has been overwhelmingly positive, so I kind of wanted to just like jump right back into it. But uh, I also want to just sit here and talk to you and dispense some advice and sort of just give you some general tips and tricks because I think that can be incredibly useful for the people who watch me on a regular basis and don't just see me from a Reddit submission. So uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do today. Today being that the RX 480 and the GTX 1060 and 1070 and 1080 are all out and floating about. Despite supply problems, graphics card prices on the used secondary market are changing, and I am here to give you my official summer 2016 price estimate guide for various GPU classes. I did one of these videos before, kind of like this, and I'm gonna do it in a lot more orderly fashion today to try to structure everything on the screen so you can see it, you can see it in columns. So stay tuned, fun stuff to follow, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to start things off, this video would not make a lot of sense if we didn't start at the top. And the top, of course, right now is the... The what? Yeah, that's right, the 980 Ti. Probably the best card on the secondary market that you can buy right now, outside of those regret 1070 and 1080s you might see floating around that are really irrelevant. So as you've already learned from a lot of other videos, if a 980 Ti performs about 90% as well as a GTX 1070, which appears to be the case, how much should you pay for a 980 Ti if a 1070 is gonna cost you about $600 Canadian, which unfortunately is how much they go for these days. Yes, that's right. Right, children, exactly. It should be no more than 90% the value of a 1070, but that is at most. On top of that, you have to knock a few bucks off for the fact that the warranty period isn't going to be as long because it's already part way through, the fact that it's dusty, that it's older, it's already seen use, and by the time you knock all of that off, here in Canada right now, I would not pay more than 500 Canadian dollars for a 980 Ti. In fact, I would aim for 450, which is what I really think they're worth. And you can price all other high-end graphics cards of days past accordingly as a result. So the Fury X and the Fury fall into that category, and so on. But of course, the top end in this case, not really the most interesting part of a video like this. The real meat, the real value to be found in graphics cards today when new releases come out is of course in the mid-range, because they sort of like all fall down as a result of the new... 1080p standard or maybe 1440p standard. Maybe 1080p is a thing of the past and as a result you can pick up a lot of these cards super cheap. I pulled up my own data from what I call the 1080p max category. So if you're looking to put together a 1080p gaming system and you need a graphics card that will pretty much just let you set all the sliders to maximum and not worry about it, you're looking at cards that are going to be stronger than a GTX 780 and the 780 is kind of like borderline. So we're talking 780 Ti, R9 290, 290X, GTX 970, upwards of the 980, the 390X, and so on. All those cards in that performance class. If we examine all of those right now, the best deal among them to buy, still, to this date, is the R9 290, and it is the card that I would continue to recommend in this market. For example, I just bought one two weeks ago. Sapphire Tri-X, three beautiful fans, quiet as fuck, Reference PCB, but eh, can't win them all. Quite simply put, there is no other graphics card in that performance class that even comes close to comparing. I did pick up a GTX 780, which is slightly worse than a 290 for $160 as well. But the only reason I grabbed it was, was because it was a reference card and I kind of needed one for a very specific client request. Otherwise, it's R9 290s all day long. As for which cards to avoid, the GTX 980 would seem like a viable candidate. They usually go anywhere from $325 to $350 here in Toronto, but given that the GTX 1060 here in Canada is on the way and will roughly cost about the same thing for consumers up here, probably not worth it to pick up a 980 right now, although the prices of those cards are plummeting and plummeting fast. Given that they perform only about 15 to 20% better than the R9 290, and cost like twice the price, it's still not really worth it. As for what to absolutely avoid, under no circumstances should you purchase an R9 390X or even a 390 in this market. People seem to be relatively unwilling to accept the fact that they're just refreshes of the 290 and 290X 
with slightly higher clocks thanks to better engineering. And couple that with the fact that they're newer to market and people are obviously not willing to just accept the fact that the car that they paid $400 for not a fucking six months ago is suddenly worth half of that. But frankly, such is the story with the AMD. They're, they're always kind of behind the curve. Their brand new shiny products are becoming old a lot quicker than Nvidia's. It takes some time for people to let go. As such, right now, 390Xs are still going for upwards of 350. I don't know who's buying them, but apparently people are. And uh, it's absolutely not worth it considering you can get a 980 for cheaper and you will eventually be able to get a 1060 here in Canada for roughly the same price. The next category on the list is what I like to refer to as 1080p plus. 1080p plus is kind of like where you can't quite max out all the sliders and get a full boner, but it's still like a pretty strong rod. It's not so limp that you can't stick it in. Still good and firm. It's just, you know, I mean, need a little bit of help from a blue pill. Among those cards, which include the 680 and 770 and 280X and 3DX and 7970 and 7970 gigahertz edition and all these cards you've already heard me talk about in the past, I would still highly recommend the 280X and the 7970 because they will routinely sell for anywhere from 120 to 140 here in Canada. But I will say that for the first time in a long time, the 770 is becoming competitive. People are starting to let go of those Kepler cards. I recently picked up a 4 gigabyte 770 Windforce Edition sitting right over there on my test bench in a machine right now, and I got it for 120 bucks, which is a stellar deal for the 4 gigabyte card. So keep an eye out for those. In this particular performance class, I would say either or. Whatever you can find that's cheaper that has the largest VRAM pool to accommodate modern textures, go for it. And the next category is so important, I decided to change shirts and wait a whole day to finish filming it, and that is your 1080p standard. We're talking about cards that can achieve 1080p somewhere around the comfortable middle, and will usually cost you $100 or less here in Canada. This includes the 7950 on the AMD side, as well as cards like the 670, or even as low as the 760 or 660 Ti on the Nvidia side. Now the Radeon 7950 used to be my card of choice in this performance class because it was everywhere and it was cheap, but actually it's kind of become scarce as of late. And the reason being is that one, they've all been bought up for the most part and they're getting a little older, so you're not gonna find too many of them on the open market. And number two, their successors, the R9 280 and R9 really didn't sell all that well. It was when AMD's market share was at its lowest. So finding them and finding them at a reasonable price, probably not gonna happen, at least not here in Toronto. You might have better luck. 670s, 660 Ti's, and even 760s have finally started to come down to earth. I myself have picked up a few of those in recent days for $100 or less in some cases. I got a $75 760, which was quite the nice find. I think this is largely due to the fact that the 600 series is now technically four generations old, although really it's only three because Kepler had two generations. So that might be why they're finally coming down. The 10 series may have just sort of pushed all those team greeners down into the corner and made them feel like their stuff was shit, but who knows. Bottom line is we're reaching parity in this performance class and either or will do you quite well. But what I will say is that the 660 Ti is probably your best bang for buck in this performance class. By the way, the GTX 960 falls into this performance class and even the four gigabyte version is entirely not worth it. People are still trying to sell these fucking things for upwards of $200 here in Canada. So fuck them and fuck that card. Next category down we'll call 1080p minus, which is like really pulling those sliders down towards their bottom edges, but not quite down to the very bottom. This includes cards that are basically pit cairn on the AMD side so anything with two gigabytes of VRAM ranging from the 7850 to the 7870 to the R7265, R9270, R9270X, R7370, and so on. And on the NVIDIA side, this segment is populated by the GTX 660, the 750Ti, and even the 950 on the highest end. All of these cards sort of make up this performance class, and they're all still very good and have a place in the market. GTX 950s are the best in this class, but they are still grossly overpriced, so avoid them like the plague. Same goes for the R7 370, although I did have the opportunity to pick one up for $85, which wouldn't have been a terrible deal, but considering you can get a 660Ti for the same price, I'd go for that instead. You are looking to pay anywhere from $60 to $65 for a card in this class, and R9 270s at the moment seem to be the cheapest on average, although you on occasion will find a GTX 660 
in the same range. One word of warning, keep in mind that early Pitcairn cards like the 7850 do come in one gigabyte versions and those will be significantly hampered in modern gaming. Which brings me to my last performance class which we will call the Potato Class. And Potato Class cards for the record always cost less than $50 and will provide you minimal performance. As you might have seen there is one such card in my shitbox, the Radeon 6870 that is serving in that role right now but similar cards to it would be cards like the the GTX 560 Ti, 470, 570. I'd even put the 580 in that class right now unless it's the three gigabyte version. It's aged really poorly. Fermi in general is not performing too well these days. It might be driver related, I'm not really sure. Or any of the 40 nanometer cards on the AMD or excuse me, ATI side. Do I have a specific recommendation for this category? Well, yeah, I still think the GTX 570 is the best card to target. I've gotten for as little as $30. Now as for which card I would least recommend in this performance class, I would say the Radeon 6950 is the one to avoid. And the reason being is that it's two gigabytes of VRAM sort of overinflate its value. And it is very unlikely that you will find one that fits into that potato class price between 20 and 50 bucks. People still tend to want 60 or $70 for them, which is absolutely absurd. And these people should be avoided at all costs or at no cost. They should be avoided at no cost. You should put your money in your pocket and not spend it with these people. Now there is technically another performance class that's sort of sub $20, but those are largely just HTPC cards with an HDMI out, or they are former gaming cards that are no longer relevant. Basically put, if it has less than one gigabyte of GDDR5, it is probably totally total shit with the exception of maybe the GTX 460, but given how much power it requires to actually run, you can kind of just fuck it and fuck the rest of them and move on. So that pretty much sums up summer 2016 buyer's guide for GPUs. Hope you enjoyed it. As for why I have been sort of uploading videos a little less frequently, kind of like once a week, it's because one, it's summertime and I like to go places. It's warm outside and we don't get a lot of that here in Toronto. And secondly, of course, I just moved into a new house and I have adult responsibilities to kind of take care of. So I'm trying to find a comfortable balance between the gym, my school studies, my work life, and another side project I have going on and potentially getting back into stand-up comedy. So there's a lot of stuff kind of going on and I am trying my best to stay with you because you guys have all been great. But just bear with me if seven days pass and I haven't quite uploaded a video yet. But that said, the next one should be coming on Saturday, I think. I'm going to be filming something with some friends of mine. It might be on another channel, I think. I think the three of us, my buddies and I, are going to do a gaming exclusive kind of just fun goofy kind of series um, that's going to be apart from this but it will be cross promoted here and might be included here as well they're going to be there's going to be some bullshit going on i might use that footage to do shitbox reviews i'm not really sure follow me on twitter at ofa to stay informed it's going to be a clusterfuck so just bear with me and uh on twitch technical you can find me there i'm going to be streaming more probably this weekend anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one